Yeah. Welcome back. Waiver Wire Tuesdays for week 16. If you're still fighting for your goddamn life like R. Kelly out here in the fantasy playoffs, good for you, but not good for you if you're watching this video because there's not a lot of great waiver wire pickups available for you this week, okay? If you got extra money, if you got extra fab, I mean, maybe spend it on the waiver wire. Maybe spend it on your family, all right? Christmas is coming up. Maybe go say hi to the wife and kids. I know it's been a long 16 weeks, but there's still a party. Guess what happens when fantasy football's over? Your family pops back up into your life. Rude awakening coming for a lot of you fuckers. But we're helping you out right now because Garrett Wilson's line on prize picks is 58 and a half receiving yards. Since this dude has taken over as a full-time wide receiver, he's quarterback proof. He's matchup proof. It doesn't matter what's happening on the football field around him. He is the football field when the Jets are on it, okay? Garrett Wilson, 58 and a half receiving yards against one of the softest pass defenses in Jacksonville. Unreal. Thursday night, let's get this bread. Prize picks, download the app, first link in the description, okay? Use promo code BDG if you're a first-time depositor and you are going to get a 100% deposit match. You throw down 20, you're going to get 40 to play with. You throw down 40, you're going to get 80 to play with. It's good time to be a good time and to love Garrett Wilson. All right, let's talk about the waiver wire. And the first guy up on this list, well, there's there's three running backs off the rip. I have Tyler Algier as the number one guy. He's coming off a career-high 139 rushing yards, still very much splitting time with Cordero Patterson. But what gives me a little bit of hope is two things. One, Caleb Huntley is out for the season with an Achilles injury, which underrated injury for fantasy football because now it turns it from a three-man backfield into a two-man backfield. Goal line carries, go to two people instead of three people, et cetera, et cetera. And Algier is just riding hot right now, so that seems to be the theme of this backfield is like, whoever's riding hot, we get excited about, and then we get disappointed about, which is probably going to end up happening. And they play Baltimore. They're at Baltimore next week, so it's a very tough run defense, so hard to get overly excited, but I do think the Falcons are starting to look toward their, to their future. Quarrel's obviously old. They, they make the change to Desmond Ritter. They want to know what they got in place for next season. So they need to make plans for, you know, the offseason, free agency, and the NFL draft, and I think they'll spend some time looking at the running back position. So they need to know what they got in Tyler Algier. I think they'll keep feeding him. He has been getting more carries in Corderell, so I think we see that continue to happen. So I like him. I, I throw like 15% on him. The next two dudes are probably the dudes at, at the top of a lot of waiver wire pieces of content this week, and that is because Jonathan Taylor is on the IR now with an ankle injury, which leaves the Colts' backfield up for grabs. And these dudes are playing with nubs right now. They 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 have no they have no desire to grab the backfield. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing out there, but it's split between Zach Moss and Deion Jackson right now. And I will be going against the grain here in that I have Deion Jackson ranked higher. All right, I have to choose one, two, or three. I would drop 10% fab on both of them. I think they're in the same tier. I think we don't know how this backfield is going to split up. And you might be saying, of course we do. We just saw Fat Moss get 24 carries against the Minnesota Vikings. That's going to happen when you're up by 33 points. You want to give the ball to your fat running back and let him grind clock. Um, that was like the most obvious thing you could ever see coming. They are the least like let's step on your neck, step on your throats type team maybe in the history of the NFL. So Zach Moss was acquired in the Naeem Hines to Buffalo trade, of course, and they've scarcely used him since they've got him. Zach Moss had 24 carries. So you assume he's going to be the workhorse. I won't assume that. I think a lot of it was game script. I also think that Jordan Wilkins has a real chance of being called up off the practice squad. He's been with the Colts for a long time. They trust this dude at least to touch the ball five to eight times per game. So I think what we're going to see is Zach, uh, Jordan Wilkins called up from the practice squad. This be sort of a three-man committee. Now, Jordan Wilkins is way more similar to Zach Moss in terms of play style, early down grinder, maybe some goal line work. I think if Jordan Wilkins gets called up, Deion Jackson still claims his role as like the pass catcher in this offense. So I feel like his role is pretty safe. He has probably more value in this offense in a team that's probably going to be trailing uh, a decent amount going forward. So I'm not overly excited about either of them. We've also seen Zach Moss for like 40 years now. He is like the least exciting running back in the NFL. Jonathan Taylor's already had his struggles getting going in this offense as a fantasy player. So I don't imagine that Zach Moss, who is not even a shell of Jonathan Taylor, is going to find success here. 24 carries, great. That's going to happen when you're up 33 to nothing. You're not going to let Matt Ryan throw the ball more than five times in that second half outside of overtime etc cetera, etc cetera. so not overly excited about either I actually prefer Deion Jackson because I, I I think it'll be a, a a committee on early downs between Zach Moss Jordan Wilkins this might age horribly but willing to put myself out there and get my neck chopped off Traylon Burks kind of acting like his neck has been chopped off after the concussion that he's missed multiple weeks from um he is the first wide receiver that I have on this list it's not an exciting week for wide receivers I don't know if he, he hasn't practiced at all so that's not a good sign for his status for week four they play against Houston, so it would have been a good matchup. Um, I'm even a little bit nervous that at this point he's 
been gone for so long that even if he is active, he's still going to be limited. But Traylon Burks has by far and away the most upside of any player on the waiver wire for fantasy football at this point. He might not even be available on your waiver wire, but if he is, this is the guy that I would be looking at because he becomes a number one as soon as he steps on the field. He started really putting it together before he got absolutely cracked in the back of the end zone, and that's what forced him to miss time, obviously. On the flip side of that game, Chris Moore, Houston wide receiver, playing at Tennessee, which is an atrocious pass defense. Brandon Cook's likely out for the rest of the season. Not injured enough to be out for the rest of the season, but his time in Houston seems like it's kind of dwindled. Nico Collins also has not practiced yet, so I would put him on the bad side of 50-50 to play in this upcoming matchup. If both those guys are out, Chris Moore didn't produce last week, but got nine targets. He has had nearly a 40% target share over the last two weeks, so although he underwhelmed this previous week, the targets are there. The opportunity is there. This is a an offense that's going to have to throw the ball a lot, especially with Damian Pierce out. So I would go back to Chris Moore if he is available on the waiver wire, if I need a flex play. I think he will, you know, he'll bounce bike a little bit here. At the running back position, I, I think the rest of them are kind of handcuffs. You have Khalil Herbert, who was designated to return from the IR. I mean, DeMont always plays well down the stretch. He scored two touchdowns on Sunday. Uh, they play against Buffalo. I think Khalil Herbert will be pretty much subjugated back to being like a backup running back, a handcuff that's getting like six to eight touches throughout the rest of the season. So I'm not overly excited about him. I don't think he's going to get that role that he had before he got hurt. Um, so he's there. Jalen Warren behind Najee Harris is getting a decent amount of touches. So I think he has some upside if something happens to Najee Harris. Then you have Josh Kelly, who's a clear uh, backup to Austin Eckler. And Austin Eckler is dealing with a shoulder injury. So that's something to keep an eye on. And he needs to be picked up this week if he is not already owned. Jordan Mason out in San Francisco is the clear backup to Christian McCaffrey. Uh, so if something happens to him, Mason will probably take a big, big workload in a good running back offense. So you have those guys who I don't think you could throw any of them into your lineup. I think you can throw Warren into your lineup right now if you are in a very fucking deep league. Got 11 touch or eleven carries last week, got into the end zone, is a good pass catcher, plays a lot on third down and third and long. So they play against the Raiders defense this week. So I think he's actually the only one of those guys that is playable. They all have upside if the guy in front of them goes down. At the wide receiver position, uh, we have a lot of fool's gold, I think, coming off of big games. Rookie Jahan Dotson quietly putting together a nice little rookie campaign, but never going to have consistency on the field behind Terry and with Curtis Samuel there. Elijah Moore, I think, is interesting this week, uh, but not really if Zach Wilson's on the field. He's getting the targets, but the production's going to be hard to come by when your quarterback stinks. K.J. Osborne, monster week, but that's on the back of Kirk Cousins throwing the ball like 57 times. Highly doubt that that carries over. I mean, we've seen K.J. Osborne, Osborne from time to time have blow-up games and then and disappear for like a month at a time so should be rostered probably shouldn't be started even against the Giants defense Matt Collins like I said in yesterday's stream that dude's fingertips have to be fucking sore because all that man does is get hit in the hands and drop passes had a relatively big game but like Devontae Adams had a bad game which is never going to happen again Darren Waller's also back Hunter Renfro is back so I don't expect uh, Matt Collins to be a thing for much longer Russell Gage also had a big week for the first time in fucking years it feels like not buying into the hype there. It's Evans, it's Godwin, it's Fournette, it's Rashad White, it's K. Dot, and, and then it's Russell Gage. So one big week out of 16 weeks is not something that I'm trying to roll the dice on here. Uh, so again, yeah, a lot of fool's gold. At tight end, I mean, Taysom Hill is obviously balling right now. They're getting him more and more involved in the offense, playing against a shitty Cleveland defense. So if he's available on the waiver wire, you could for sure start Taysom Hill, obviously. Uh, Chiggy Baby out there in Tennessee gets a good matchup against the Houston Texans. Uh, Chiggy just continues to get it done. Another strong performance. He doesn't have a lot of week-to-week -week upside. He's not making... Um, he's not scoring and making big plays. He doesn't have games that he's going over like 80 yards and a touchdown, but he's consistently hanging around that 40, 50 yard mark and making big plays on a week to week basis. Noah Fant, I kind of quietly like this week against Kansas City. Obviously, he should be a high scoring affair. Noah Fant hasn't been like rel super, super involved in the offense, but I do like um, the matchup this week. I think he could be an underrated play. Yeah, that's what we got at the. Um at the flex position and our, our full rankings are up on our website bdge.co if you're a big dog member you'll see the become a member big button at the top if you are not to get access to the weekly waiver wire rankings uh at quarterback i mean daniel jones against minnesota is a good streamer i even think dalton against cleveland's not a terrible streamer gardner Minshew would be exciting if jalen hurts misses time with the shoulder injury but he plays at dallas so probably be under pressure a lot defensively Tampa Bay at Arizona. If Trace McSorley is playing quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals, you want 
any defense playing against him. This dude is not a quarterback at the NFL level in any stretch of the imagination. Denver playing at the LA Rams, also strong defense against a shitty offense. You want those kind of matchups. Tennessee at home against the Houston Texans. There are ferocious run defense, not good as a pass defense, but against Houston, you could probably lock them up. I like the Chargers at Indianapolis. I like the Jets at home against Jacksonville, and I like Pittsburgh at home against Las Vegas. That's a big mismatch on the D-line versus the offensive line. So those are my six favorite defensive streamers in order right there, but go get Tampa Bay if they are available on your waiver wire. That's all I got for y'all today. Make sure you go hit this precious line right here. Garrett Wilson just too damn good to fail against a shit defense. Don't care if it's Mike White. Don't care if it's Zach Wilson. Don't care if it's Garrett Wilson throwing a Garrett Wilson right now. We out.